when an ugly serpent bit him on the heel. On Springfield Mountain, there did dwell a lovely youth. I knew him well. He scarce had mowed half round the field. When an ugly serpent bit him on the heel. On Springfield Mountain. That's a pretty one, Mr. Shanks. They's all pretty, Mrs. Shanks. Songs is pretty because they just flowers from a man's soul. Of course, so singing's a sign of... Of what, Mr. Shanks? Of being hungry, Mrs. Shanks. Now, here I am, twice or, well, maybe three times your size. But it's always you that's singing for his dinner. I'm trying to catch up, my love, and it's hard to do. Vittles, my darling, or I'll sure fade clean away. <laughs> Mr. Shanks, you're positively bottomless. <laughs> <laughs> Good day to you, sir. Oh! Well, now, sir, here stands a very fortunate man. And why might that be? Well, I was in need of help, and the good providence provides. Look at me, sir. No rifle, no supplies. I was the victim of an Indian raid. You see, I was heading south to visit an old friend, uh, Daniel Booth. Did you hear that, Mr. Shanks? The very man we've been traveling for four weeks to meet. We're going to homestead, Mr. R uh, Blunt, madam. William Blunt. In Boonesboro, Mr. Blunt. Oh, you couldn't do better, madam. Still, my situation remains the same. I'm at the mercy of the Indians. In short, sir, I need a hand. You sure talk funny. <laughs> well, I'm afraid all Englishmen talk rather funny. Well, sir, may I have a lift? Well, I don't know about that. Why, Mr. Shanks, you're not going to let that fine gentleman stand in the middle of the road with all these heathen savages around? Put that rifle down. But, my love, in this here wilderness? If you let that nice man stand there, you can whistle for your dinner. Uh, climb up, Mr. Blunt. Thank you. Your rifle makes me a little nervous, sir. Thank you. A thousand pardons, my friend. And thank you for the use of your wagon. Now, if you and your charming lady will kindly step down. You do that again, I'm gonna scalp you. 
What's going on, Jericho? You busting up things? Jericho just fell, that's all, Pa. I was practically pushed. Daniel, you're raising a fiend here. That's what I think sometimes. I didn't do nothing. At least not much. I was feathered. I figured it was a fly buzzing around my nose and I swatted at it and the next thing I knew I was crashed. Dad? I'm coming. You ready? Yeah. I'll be out in a minute. You got some chores to do? Why don't you do them? What was it, Dan? Oh, it's Jericho. You might say he fell. Well, I heard you talking to Israel. No, it's anybody's chores. <laughs> Could it be that Israel had something to do with Jericho's falling? No, it's nothing. How long have you be gone this time, Dan? No, we ought to be able to get enough beaver hides in a couple of weeks. Be right back. You won't be back for at least a month, and you know it. A beaver are prime this time of the year, Mrs. Paul. wandering about above the salt flats. It appears they're looking for you. That him? Daniel Boone. It's a crime, that's what it is. Poor innocent, stripped clean to the bone. Aye, kindness in our hearts. Compassion for the wayfaring stranger. And what does the blackguard do? Rob us. Takes our all and sends us afoot. What are you folks talking about? You're going to say that you don't know him. That he's no friend of yours that he's as dark an acquaintance as you've never seen. And me, with my one good dress gone, and the fine pair of shoes I bought in Philadelphia, and the mirrors, and my pots, and my household goods. Oh, the brazenness of it all. I ought to get me a limb, thick as my arm, and just pound you like a peg into the ground. Now, just a minute. Would you mind explaining? Robbery, that's what, ma'am. And he said he was an old friend of yours. What friend? Mr. William Blunt. Manners. <laughs> Manners to cheat an angel with. William Blunt. Aye. Now tell us you don't know him. That I wouldn't do. I do know him. Paradise, you said. <laughs> that was Boonesboro. And here we are. And them all friends of thieves. Come on in, folks. That's it. I'm poor again, mister. I'm poor. The food is just fine, Mrs. Boone, just fine. Well, anyway, we were riding down the trail, and there he was, standing just like a gentleman outside the tavern. Charming and pleasant as you please. Well, there ain't any more to tell. How many men did he have with him? Half a dozen. But before we knew it, we was walking and they was riding. William Blunt. Daniel, if that Englishman gets a toehold on Kentucky soil, he'll have this territory standing on its head within a month. Is he that bad? Just who is this fellow, Mr. Boone? Well. He's a gentleman, aren't you? What do you know? I told you, Mr. Shanks. It was a gentleman that robbed us. What about uh, what he told us about him and you? That we knew each other. Uh-huh. Well, that was true, once. What do you mean, once? First time I ever saw William Blunt, I was coming across a trace, and he shot three Choctaws off my back. Uh... In those days, he had a title. He was known as Sir William Blunt. And that man that got the Choctaws off me, that man was a friend indeed. Since then, he's become as bad as any Shawnee scalp hunter. A man who works for the highest bidder. A man whose only loyalty is to the biggest bag of gold. And a man for whom the Cherokee have had a fire burning for a long time. 
what's been done to bring this fella down to size. I mean, up till now. Well, Kentucky's a big place, Mr. Shanks. A lot of land to get lost in, especially if you're William Blunt. And that's just the way he wants it. Well, one thing is certain, Daniel, he has to be stopped. If he's going in for robbing poor settlers along the trail. Maybe he's going in for something else. I just come from Cincinnati's store. He's expecting a shipment of rifles, 50 of them, brown vests. Now, maybe that's the reason you're Mr. Blunt's in the neighborhood. If he gets his hands on those... He's already got them. Five boxes of them. Hawkins up in Salem sent them down with me. Paid me ten shillings, hard money. He sent them down with you? Mm-hmm. He was supposed to send them special freight. Weren't no special freight to send them with. Leastways, none dependable like me, so I took them. Had powder, too. Couple barrels. Well, guess he's got them all now. Do you realize what I realize? A man like Blunt, 50 rifles and a Shawnee, that's a combination that could wipe out half of Kentucky. Well, he's got to be stopping right now. I'll round up every able-bodied man in the settlement and we'll get going. No. Halt and Blunt's a job that's got to be done fast and quiet. Stopping him is my job. The Cherokee have a stake in this. I got nothing better to do. All right. Glad to have your company. Dan. Don't worry, Becky. We'll be back. Can we do something, Mrs. Boone? No, nothing. Thank you. You'll stay here, of course. There's plenty of room. What about our own cabin? If Dan doesn't get those rifles back, you won't be needing one. None of us will. Sorry. No more in a day. I'd say the same for the fire. These tracks head towards Boonesboro. If you go a little farther, you'll find that they double back north. myself and a lot more i've got a feeling it'll all be coming home to roost well, come on moon enough let's go Treasure, my lad, that's what it is, an absolute treasure. Why, I've never even seen a woman as beautiful as this. <laughs> Me, I'd settle for hand for breakfast. Oh, scraps, you're an insensitive fellow. Fifty rifles, man. Why, it's like owning a harem with each wife as lovely as the other. Them horses are getting hungry, too. I know, I know. Well, well then why don't we move on? I don't understand what now, you're doing. Now, now, scraps, don't point. It's rude. Sit down and enjoy these rifles. And I don't understand why we're sitting here like ducks. Horse sense. Huh? It's horse sense. Here, play with one of these little rascals. <laughs> oh, 
patience, Scraps. You'll see. And what if we've been followed here? They can walk right in here. Exactly. But there'll be no bloodshed. Not a drop. That's far enough. Well, well. My old friend Daniel Boone. Hello, Daniel. Drop those rifles and get your hands up. Where are the others? Others? There are no others. There were six of you. Oh, a little disagreement. Three deserted. I don't believe you. Get in the wagon. What for? On second thought, we'll all get in the wagon. If they're out there, we'll be there to greet them when they come back. The way you distrust me, Daniel. And to think that once we were friends, comrades. That was a long time ago. Oh, not so very long. Get in the wagon. <laughs> Say, Daniel, uh, do you remember that ridiculous bear hunt? Uh, you sure were something chasing that bear in your scarlet uniform and all that gold braid. Can't forget that. And you're dying from laughing. <laughs> All I see now is Shawnee feathers. And the brace of swamp rats. Well, I made a minor change of allegiance, that's all, Daniel. You wouldn't be uh, trying to keep us out here in the open, would you? Oh, Daniel, there was a price on my head. I had a little disagreement with a fellow officer about a woman. And, uh, unfortunately, I shot straighter and faster. Well, the fellow died, and of course, I was in a bit of trouble. But that sort of thing happens all the time, Daniel. Get in the wagon. Oh, now, Daniel, what did I do this time to make you so angry with me? All I did was borrow a wagon and make an overstuffed woman and a somewhat understuffed man do a bit of walking. Now, surely, Daniel. What about those rifles? What will the Shawnee give for them? Are you Cherokee, sir? If they don't move, let's shoot them. Aye, but your friends are bloodthirsty. Nobody's gonna get shot. Well, I'm relieved. We're gonna take you to Salem, William. After we get your friends. Jail? But I'm accustomed to freedom, Daniel. Prison would be quite a hardship. You haven't got much choice. Now, come on inside. <laughs> well, I suppose I'll have to defer to you. <laughs> well, you see, Scraps? No bloodshed. Well, it now appears, Dan, that you have no choice. Well, will you gentlemen kindly uh, drop your weapons? Thank you. Well, you'll have to admit one thing, Daniel. What's that? I learned quite well from the man who was perhaps my very best friend. Understand it. Understand what? He could have killed us back there, but he didn't. And I don't think he will. Why not? He's no different from Gertie or Merle or any of them other outlaws, except for one thing. They're dead and he's alive. Well, I still don't think he'll harm us. I wouldn't put anything past him. He's a renegade. That he is. He's also a real curious man. Oh, no. Oh. Trip's over, Daniel. And? Well, I've prepared a little test for you. And I'm sure you'll pass it with flying colors. When a man's murdered, there's no question about passing with flying colors. It's a sure thing. <laughs> you bloodthirsty fellow. Who said anything about murder? Now, Daniel, I'm going to let you go. And this is your moment of departure. 
I don't ever remember teaching you this trick. <laughs> no. No, this is a little thing that I thought of myself, Daniel. Now, you see, we're several miles inside of Shawnee country. Not exactly friends of yours, are they? Well, you could certainly make your way back without too much trouble. But if you try to follow me, two rather unpleasant things will happen. What two things? First, the Shawnee will certainly get you. Second, I'll kill him. You see, I'm only going to let two of you go. That young man, he'll be my hostage, or as Lloyds of London might put it, my insurance. No deal. I'm not leaving Jericho. You have no choice, Daniel. Turn him loose, William. Look, I'm trying to help you, Daniel, to save you. Don't you understand? Head south. I wouldn't want it on my conscience. Come on, Jericho! I couldn't help it, Scraps. I tripped. A remarkable man, my friend Rowan, isn't he? A remarkable man. Daniel! Good luck, Daniel. And don't follow us. I'd like our friendship to last. At least until the next time. I told you he was a mighty curious man. Come on. we had a fire. I know, I know. Fire brings Shawnee. Like bees to honey. Daniel? What are you thinking, Daniel? Thinking about those 50 rifles that are still heading toward the Shawnee. Are you still calculating on them rifles? We set out to bring them back. We haven't done it yet. But you heard what Blunt said about following him, and I think he meant it. He sure did. Well, what good would it do if we caught him anyhow? We don't have no guns, nothing. Oh, I don't know. We have three pairs of arms, three pairs of legs, three brains. We're not so bad off. And I'm used to my arms, legs, and brains. I'd kind of like to keep them. But he won't keep them long. Neither will half the folks in Kentucky if Blunt gets those guns to the Shawnee. A man like that. I think you've done a lot of things for people. Helped them build good lives. That's sad. He was a friend of mine, but I've got to hunt him down. Well, it's light enough to see wagon tracks, Daniel. You mean you're going after him now? Now, you coming? If not, you'll have to find a tree to spend the night in. The Shawnee are night hunters. Well? Daniel's right. Now let's go. Them horses, they're starting to blow hard. On, my lad. Keep on. We ought to give them a chance to catch the wind. I said keep on. Still moving. Well, they haven't stopped since we lost them yesterday. Do you suppose they're late for an appointment? One thing for sure. They're not going that fast because they're afraid of us. Could be an appointment with the Shawnee. Hey,
All right, boys. Let's unload. Come on, hurry it up. main camp. What are we going to do now? Throw rocks at him? Uh, I figure we'll have to rush him. What? Before whoever they were hurrying to meet gets there. Surprise, that's the only chance we have. There are two of them. They're heading for the lane to. Smelling friends, the Shawnee are here. And this time we got more trinkets for him, huh? That's a profound truth. This time we'll get everything we want, maybe even more. Why, Kashita, you beautiful, ugly old bear. It's a pleasure and delight to see you again. Horses. This time you bring wagon. We borrowed it, my friend. Manna from heaven. Something in wagon? A surprise. Something to please Shawnee? Please the Shawnee. Why, it'll make the Shawnee happy, joyous. It'll make the Shawnee even more powerful and strong. Whiskey. <laughs> no. Scraps, show Kushida what we brought this time. Aye, aye, sir. Kushida, you will have to go back and bring your chief. This time, I will trade only with him. Always you trade with Kashita. Now. Fifty rifles and barrels of powder. That's what I bring this time. Here. Take it, Kashita. Show it to your chief. And tonight, bring him here. Go. Now, wait. Be sure you bring him alone. I will not trade with many armed warriors around me. You understand? Kashita understand. Bring chief only. Guns much good. Kashita leave braves here. Guard with you. Your braves are welcome. Well, what do you know, Scraps? Neither of us trust the other, you know. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, be seated. Now, hurry it up. Get everything ready for tonight for our Shawnee celebration. <laughs> <laughs> There's nine of them now instead of six. You still gonna rush them? Well, it doesn't seem too practical, does it? Sure doesn't. What do you think, Mingo? Well, we expected a fight, didn't we? A fight, yes, but not a massacre. You'd feel better with a rifle in your hand, wouldn't you? About 100% better. Well, there are five cases of them in that camp. And all we need is one. But how? They've sort of tripled the odds, so rushing them is out. I should hope so. Well, we'll just wait till dark and try something then. Dark? A whole Shawnee nation will be here when it's dark. That's right, but they'll be celebrating. Be whiskey flowing. Where are you going? I'm going to sleep. Sleep? 
We can't do anything until dark. The man's got to keep his energies up. Five Shawnee. Thank you. Honor my house, gentlemen. This may not look much like the great hall of my ancestral home in Sussex, but it's uh, good enough for the business at hand. You talk much. Well, I have much to talk about, but not about guns. In good time, my friend, in good time. Pleasure first, business second. What are you waiting for? Why don't you get home with the trading? Protocol, my friend. Strategy. Entertainment first. You mean fill them up on drink and, and they won't know how much to trade in for them guns? <laughs> you know, if I had it in my power scraps, I'd recommend you for a post in His Majesty's Foreign Service. <laughs> no, this time we're trading for a lot more than a pile of pelts. Mean it? Land. More land than a single man has ever owned. Land and all the rights to it. Fur, fish, and mineral. A private empire, Scraps. That's what I'm trading for. <laughs> well, gentlemen, come on. We've got much to celebrate. I will be sure that this is true. When I see the 50 rifles you talk about. <laughs> you will. You're to meet us at the lean-to. No sense in waiting any longer. How will they do that? like this before. Rifles, powder, lead shot, bags of salt, calico. They certainly have been collecting things. It's enough for William Blunt to start an empire of his own. this we need to take back all the rifles for sure there's some 
powder and shot. What's that for? In case anything goes wrong, nobody's gonna get anything. Let's go. Jericho, tie him up. over there at the horses. Come on, Mingo. Let's circle around. Friendship? Well, in this case, I prefer a rifle. May I ask just what your plan is? You may. We're gonna load the wagon. With rifles, no doubt. Nothing else. Oh, <laughs> you rascal. Come on. <laughs> All right, that's far enough. My men and the Shawnee will be back soon, Daniel. Then what will you do? Well, now, that depends on how long it takes you to load. Besides, we've reduced the odds. Now, come on, you've got a lot of work to do. But I don't do rough work. That Move! Well, he's as bloodthirsty as ever. You too. Rashida, I've said it once, I'll say it again. There stands a remarkable man. Start carrying it and make it fast. Oh, Daniel, if I only had a partner like you. <clears throat> On second thoughts, so, though, a partnership with you might not last. In the wagon. Ooh.
Danny, we haven't got much time. I'm not going to leave him any powder. Have a heart, Daniel. I'm exhausted. I'm a gentleman, and gentlemen don't have to carry I want all things. the powder I can get. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <sighs> Pick it up. Tanya, are you all right? I'm all right, just a little singed. Your friend came close to blowing us all to Richmond. In your case, I'm afraid that wouldn't be quite far enough. Daniel, let's get out of here. Time's running out. Drag him to the wagon. Coming? Not going to leave him any powder. Get to the wagon and get it rolling. I'll be right with you. supplies we have, we ought to be able to hold off an army. You know, Daniel, it's a pleasure, a genuine pleasure to be captured by a far-seeing man. Thank you, William. Tie him up, Mingo. Oh, <laughs> oh allow me. Loading those rifles, Jericho. Daniel. What? We're old friends, you and I. They're your friends, the Shawnee. Answer me, aren't we? We were friends. Then listen to me. You haven't got a chance. Look. There, too. The chief must have called him out, Daniel. Now, those five men, they'll keep you here until the others can catch up. We can hold them all off for days, if we have to. I've no doubt you could, but I know these Shawnee. In retaliation, they'll leave you here and ride on to Boonesboro. You may live, but others will die in Boonesboro. Your concern for the people of Boonesboro... Mingo, let him talk. You know something? I only wish you respected me as much as I respect you. In spite of everything, I still consider you my friend. Get on with what you were saying about Boonesboro. All right. Release me, Daniel. You'll never get me to a prison anyway. You know I'd make you kill me before I'd let you put me behind bars. You believe that, don't you?
Now, all the Shawnee want is to rescue me. They need me. I'm important to them. They listen to what I say. Release me, and I'll head north with the Shawnee, and that'll be an end to it. Are you going to believe him, Daniel? I'll keep my word. Remember, you may be able to hold off the Shawnee, but then they'll descend on Boonesboro in vengeance to burn and kill. You'll be left here with all these guns and shot and powder while your neighbors die. Will you let me go? There isn't much time now. Let me go. You used to be a decent man, Blood. Well, in some ways, I still am, Daniel. Maybe. I don't want to see anybody get killed in Boonesboro. On time. You just made yourself a bargain. You're not going to trust him, are you, Daniel? You've got to trust another man once in a while, Jericho. <laughs> you still aren't sure. How are you, Daniel? I'm sure. That's a strange way, isn't it? To be friends. Now we will all go home. Then we will tell the chief, eh, Kushita? Oyama. Oh, Well, it looks like we're going to make it. Yeah, if we can trust him. Until the next time, Daniel Boone. Farewell. Farewell to you. Now let's head for home. All right, but we lost all of Mr. Shank's household goods. Yeah, we really made him a poor man. I don't go along with that. Shanks and all the people the settlement still have their lives, and that makes them rich. Dad? Uh-huh. I gotta admit it. When you let Blunt loose, I was sure we were gonna get double-crossed. <laughs> yeah, but we wasn't. Sure wasn't. All of which proves one thing. Huh? What? We're just as lucky as a shank. A man never knows how many good friends he has. Get up there, Bessie. Let's go, let's go. 